This is a Living a Creative Life video for Opus, where we share life stories of members within our Creative Life community. In this episode, we're delighted to have Malaysian-born, award-winning Canadian painter Chin Yuan as our guest. Chin creates colorful, uplifting, and dynamic abstract paintings. As well as explaining some of her techniques, she'll share profound insights into how art is a gift, an essential way to celebrate life and triumph over adversary. My paintings are sort of a window or an outlet for me to be able to play with my ideas. To me, sometimes I see it as like cerebral acrobatics, gymnastics, and um, a way to express um, my conviction to, to feeling positive, to be able to deal with the noise or the negativity um, that surrounds us. Um, you know, world politics, the news, for example, during pandemic, and during the pandemic, I lost my mom and my mother-in-law and some friends. And, um, and it was a difficult time. And, and I was so grateful that I have an outlet in art to be able to submerge myself into something where I could channel a positive energy, to be able to create something beautiful and something that lifts me up and hopefully others. I really react to colors. And so being able to use some um, beautiful paints with rich pigments really allow me to express myself. I think that I choose my material uh, that suit my character and I like to move fast. And so acrylic was perfect for me. And I use primarily golden acrylics and especially heavy body um, because heavy body dries really fast and it's very delicious. It's when you're painting it, it moves beautifully. And I use knives and brushes and um, I'm a person who loves movement. I love to dance. And so when I paint, um, the way I move my materials, my tools on the canvas is part of the joy, the part of the, the tactile enjoyment of painting. Heavy body is, is what I love because of the, the richness, um, the fast dry, and also the pigments. They are just gorgeous and they really, um, they just make me happy when I see beautiful colors and um, beautiful shapes and beautiful movements. I do create physical collage where you have, you know, cloth and you have actually different kinds of materials that's introduced to the canvas or to the board, to the wood. And, um, but when I just paint, they look like collages. And a lot of actually textile artists or quilt makers say that my paintings look like quilts to them, but they are actually all just painted surfaces. So I love improvisation. I just um, randomly choose colors and just um, pour them on, on the surface and let them dry. And then I build on top of it. And I would start with something that moves, that moves, and then I would react. And that to me is really exciting because it is constantly live. It's constantly um, at the moment. Of course, at one point, I would have created something where I actually have to sit down and I do that a lot. I would sit back and contemplate and think of what's next because at the end of the day, you have to consider the composition. You have to consider, is it achieving the mood that you want to create? If I feel that something is too intense and I my aim is to be sort of quieter, or more peaceful and more graceful, then I would tone it down with different movements or different colors. So it's always very reactive. And it's also an interaction with what I've done before and also respecting the fact that the painting might take me somewhere else. I, I'm always very open-minded and flexible with how I react and what I do next. Not afraid to sacrifice a really pretty section for the whole composition and also to always feel that there is something better you know and don't treat it too precious move move on I think that the materials I choose are very universal in some ways <clears throat> and the the language of movements the language of lines and colors are very universal even though <clears throat> I mean certain colors probably evoke different things in different culture but I think the underlying sense of <clears throat> 
the energy in my painting is quite universal. The different stages of our life, the different things that we go through, we seek different things. We, we yearn for different colors. We yearn for different uh, form of energy. And, and I think that is universal too. And I think that is, um, depending on where you live, there are certain times that you just can't handle certain type of energy and you want to be able to find something that relates to you. And I think that that's important that, that the, the viewer or the person who buys a painting is sensitive to that, to know that um, what feeds others do not feed you. And it's important to choose what, what speaks to you. I think innately, <clears throat> what I want to express is something that is very private. It is about what I feel, what I seek um, to make myself um, happy. And so that language has to speak to someone and that language is up to the other person to connect with me. So when someone receives the language or is able to see it from their, their or relate to it from their perspective, wonderful. Yes, it is difficult to paint um, when I'm feeling low, especially with my mother's death, I did stop painting. It was the first time I actually couldn't paint. And that's because I was her caregiver and it was very hard to watch her die. But with death, you think of life. And the saying that life is for the living became really poignant to me. All the time that I don't get to spend with her anymore is timed that I can live, that I can create. And so I channel that. So when I paint, I think of living vibrantly, living actively for myself and for her. Because without her, I wouldn't be alive. Without her, I would not have the talent or the creative skills. And so I want to live fully. And, and I think my paintings showed that the, the boldness became bolder. The exertion of movement became stronger. The painting that I created um, after her death was called The Great Calm. I wanted to create something that sear off, um, that wishes her a lovely journey to arrive at a calm place after a difficult life. And after that painting, I created something that was called Escaped to Zero Gravity. The title didn't come until the painting was starting to develop. And that painting was full of movement and full of trajectories. And, and I felt that it was sort of me moving on or moving towards something unknown. And that painting, Escape to Zero Gravity, was my way of expressing um, living boldly, um, unfettered, but at the same time, celebrating the energy that my mom has given me or the, the, the talent and the skills that I was born with. I mean, it sounds kind of corny, but it is something that I felt innate when I was a little kid, that I had something in me. It is a gift that I need to express and I need to um, enjoy it. Even though I had gone through a difficult time and I still am because I still grieve her, but to me, we need to have a direction. We need to be able to, while we are alive, be responsible for being alive, be responsible for using your gifts and to fulfill what you could with what you have. And so I think that when people look at my paintings, they are very positive, they are uplifting, but there is also um, a, a reason why there is such a drive towards the positivity. And I think that for me, it is important to, to channel that um, or to, to carve a way 
to use um, to use my creativity as something that lifts me up. There's so many things that can bring us down, but I choose not to, when I create, not to go there. I want to be able to move beyond that and open a window to something that's exciting, that is that allows me to dream, to, to create fantasies that feeds me because they are beautiful, because they are something that I can do, that's something that I can um, create. We hope you've enjoyed this Living a Creative Life video on Xinren. Here at Opus, we're committed to sharing life stories of members within our Creative Life community. You'll find today's episode and many more inspirational videos in our Living a Creative Life resource library at www.opusartsupplies.com.